What happens when politics meets the stock market? Political parties investing in the stock market is not uncommon in Malaysia. And recently, one political party made its move again. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show. That party is MCA, one of the component parties of the Barisan National Coalition. Now, before I go any further, I want to clarify that this story is not trying to imply anything. What I've done here is rearranging the facts into its timeline to help you better understand some interesting coincidence in the stock market. After Lanka Sheraton in early 2020, the Perikata National Government took office and the position of Minister of Transport was assigned to MCA President. Datuk Seri Dr. Wee Ka Siong. Since then, MCA has been quietly increasing its stake in a company that is closely related to the transportation industry, a car ladder upholstery maker, Pekka Group Wehat. In Pekka's 2021 annual report, it shows that MCA started to build a small position in the company acquiring 2.8% stake to be exact. During this period of time, Pekka's share price enjoys a good bull run, up 450% when Malaysia just gradually reopened up after COVID-19 lockdown. Slightly more than a year later, MCA increased its stake in Pekka Group once more. This time, they became a substantial shareholder with a 5.7% stake in the company. Pekka's share price experienced a deja vu with another bull run of 30% from a low of 65 cents. Maybe it's a coincidence? Relating MCA to the share price rally is not the point. Ultimately, stock investing is a long-term game even for a political party. There must be exciting catalysts for MCA to put money on Pekka. Since Dato Seri Dr. Wee Ka Siong took office, electric vehicles have been one of the highlights within Ministry of Transport. This is in line with the Low Carbon Footprint Blueprint 2021 to 2030, which outlines proposals on ways to address emission in the land transport sector. On his official Facebook page, he commented that for the EV sector to flourish in Malaysia, we need to look into implementing new policies that address the various issues surrounding it. There are already a few initiatives in place, such as a free road tax for EV cars until 2025 and some tax exemption for CKD EVs. These initiatives were introduced during the Budget 2022 announcement. Given that the government will publish Budget 2023 in October, maybe we could see even more incentives from the government to push the higher EV adoption in Malaysia. According to this article, each of us owns more than one car, including people who don't even have a driving license. When the government talks about pushing for higher EV adoption in Malaysia, it's talking about us replacing of existing combustion engine cars into an EV. If every car was to be replaced, damn, can you imagine how big the market will be in the next few years? It's, it's massive! If the car industry could enjoy a bull run going forward due to a new wave of replacing combustion engine cars into EVs, then why didn't MCA invest in a car manufacturer? Why a car seat upholstery company instead? I don't know. The thing is, it is very hard to predict what kind of cars consumers prefer. It could be anything, ranging from an electric car, a hydrogen car, cars made by the Japanese, or continental cars. But one thing for sure, they all have car seats. From that perspective, it is a safer bet to win big for MCA. On top of that, in recent years, car brands tend to use high-end material in the interior design of cars to be more marketable in these competitive markets. Because of that, leather seat covers are embedded as part of the standard car accessories for selected variants of car models launched by most of the car players. Pekka has over 25 years of experience in leather craftsmanship, servicing more than 10 major car brands seen in Malaysia and around the world. Judging from the top 5 car brands in Malaysia, they command 85.2% market share of the entire car industry. All these top 5 are Pekka's customers. So, it's not hard to imagine they will continue to profit well in the business. In fact, Pekka is the sole leather seat cover supplier for Porodua. If Porodua continues to do well, 
so does Pekka. Currently, Pekka is a 600 million ringgit company. In the next three to five years, Pekka aims to be in the billion ringgit club. To achieve that, it needs to do more than just leather upholstery car seats. One of the ways to help them to achieve that could be an acquisition of another company that is synergistic to the current business. Say, a car seat assembler, for example, to add value to their customers. In the meantime, Pekka had acquired a piece of land in Serenda, Selangor to build a second manufacturing plant. In about a year's time, the new plant will be ready to double up Pekka's production capacity to around 45,000 seats per month. Wow! Quite good, huh? Nonetheless, the world is moving towards a greener world. For that, the EV car sector is something that many countries are focusing on. Since Pekka also exports their products overseas such as the US, the UK, Netherlands, Japan, and many more, the potential for MCA to make a gain from this investment is limitless. On top of that, it will be exciting to see Pekka venturing out to the real and avian sectors as well to expand their business operation. Anyways, from a business point of view, I guess having MCA as a new substantial shareholder of Pekka is a win for both parties. When somebody owns a high stake in a business, they will do their best to help the business to shine. Recently, we have already seen a series of initiatives to encourage higher EV adoption in Malaysia, like what we have discussed earlier. For me as a green vehicle lover, I kind of like the idea of how the government is pushing for greener initiatives via EV adoption. I wonder moving ahead in budget 2023 announcement in October, will there be more goodies for the EV sector? What do you guys think? Tell us in the comments below. That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.